is Kenya Moore. I'm an actress. Um, I'm a former Miss USA, but most people probably recognize me from being Gone with the Wind Fabulous on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think fans see me on the show as very outspoken, very direct, very honest. Basically, I'm a wild card. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> We're at a baby store because I have a little bundle of joy coming. And the possibility of what's to come is, you know, intimidating. So that's why I'm here. I'm probably more on the skeptic side, but I want to be a believer. I have never had a reading before because the unknown terrifies me. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm cool. Hi, Carolyn. Great to see you. I'm Kenya. It's wonderful to meet you, Kenya. Yeah, oh my you gosh. too. You're even cuter in person. Oh, you're shocked. <laughs> you look fabulous. Uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to be. It's hard when you're carrying this, you know, bundle around. So I wanted to bring you to a baby store yeah. because, you know, it's new beginnings, have some good vibes and energy. Yeah. Uh, this is a first. <laughs> yeah, this is my first. Oh, really? Yes. No, no, it's okay. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that good? If the girls start to peek out a little bit more, just let me know so I can cover them. It's a little bit more difficult now. Same here, right? <laughs> I thought I was feeling butterflies, but I realized it's just the baby kicking. <laughs> And I prefer to never really know what I'm walking into as far as what a client wants. So okay. um, I think that naturally, usually what's meant to come through will. So do you have any objects today? I do. I have a photo. Fabulous. Okay. You want it right now? Yeah, if you don't okay. mind, I'll hold on to it. Awesome. Fabulous. Okay. All right. So just give me one sec. I'm going to kind of see what's coming in. Okay. Ooh, starting to sweat, which is always a good sign. I mean, stuff's starting to come through. And immediately as I'm connecting, they are having me talk about like mother figure, mother figure, mother figure keeps coming through. Right, a maternity star. Right. But there's like a lot of motherly <laughs> energy coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, I do feel like, give me one sec. I feel like I have to go, there's a situation basically where I feel like I have to talk about a grandmother, but she's more than a grandmother. This would be someone who would have taken on more of a role of like mom. And she basically kind of is just acknowledging this very loving, very like, oh, if you need some help, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna bring you in. Like it's that mm -hmm. kind of energy. But I feel like I, part of why I'm supposed to be here today is to talk about this person. Like when she's coming in, I feel like she'd give it to you straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's something about her being very direct mm -hmm. and she's lovely, but I don't know if people had made comments about her size versus her personality. There's something mm -hmm. about this where they're like, that's a lot in a little package or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Do you have any grandmothers that have passed away yes. that you were close to? Yes. Okay. My grandmother had a big personality. Yep. She was always the life of the party, but she was she was short. Plus she was 4'10". <laughs> <Yes. laughs> she Precious. was just loved by everyone. Every person loved her. It's amazing being able to feel the love she had for yeah. you. Yeah. Even more than she was ever even able to verbalize. Don't, don't tell anyone, but I was her favorite. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe it. <laughs> Would not surprise me. Absolutely. <laughs> the thing is, is she's having me talk about other family dynamics. And this is tricky because your grandma is taking on a motherly role, but then putting your mom <laughs> to the side. There's a living dynamic that they're bringing up that's like feels like hitting a wall and hitting a wall and hitting a wall. And I don't know to what extent this makes sense, but if on your mom's side of family, if there's any mother-daughter relationships that have been strained or have been difficult, they're having me acknowledge the daughter in this equation. According to grandma, the daughter in this equation is doing nothing wrong. This daughter in this equation has given the mother figure an opportunity time and time again. It's like, we can't change people on that side of family. <laughs> it is what it is. Did grandma take on the role of mom when mom wasn't able to in some way? Yes. Okay. Grandma wishes you had more support. <laughs> She's kind of basically saying, I wish I were here to be able to take care of you. Do you feel like you could use some more support on your mom's side that you're not getting? 100%. Okay. I just need you to know in the way this comes through, you're not doing anything wrong with this. She's having me talk about trying, putting forward effort, even giving someone more than one chance. But every time we do this, it's like we get kicked back and we like kick ourselves and wonder, well, why did I give that chance? Why did I give that opportunity? Just doing this. And it's like, let it go, let it go, let it go. And there's a sense of comfort around that. Um, I was raised by my grandmother. Wow, okay. Um, from three days old. Aww. My mother um, was a teenage mom. Um, 
and she just didn't want to have a child. Wow. Um, she basically didn't want to acknowledge my existence my entire life, um, even though I lived five minutes away from her, my family, my my mother's family. And um, I've, up until maybe a couple of years ago, I tried my whole life to have a relationship with her. And she rejected me each and every time. And uh, I was always um, chasing that relationship with my mother, even though my grandmother was the most amazing woman in the world. She wasn't my mother. No matter how popular you were in school or how beautiful you were or how smart you were, you could never get something that most people have is the love from their mother. I just felt like I couldn't, I was never within reach of that. So my grandmother witnessed everything that she did to me. And um, my grandmother is just a very um, loving person, forgiving, she taught me forgiveness. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing woman, I mean, clearly. Yeah. I thought in my mind she would hold on until the baby was born, but <laughs> yeah. it didn't happen that way. It's hard. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. Um, is there anything that was unresolved for you or anything that you could benefit from knowing? What does she think of my husband? <laughs> Well, it's funny because <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is. There's something funny. She's having me talk about him. Talking about his appearance, mm -hmm. like the hunk of man. <laughs> she's having me talk about him. And she's like, show me a tall glass of water. <laughs> when this is going across. And she's basically like, yeah, him, uh-huh. Well, she like good looking guy. Like, that's a, that's a tall glass of water. <laughs> so she's like. She would say that all the time. He's not tall, but she would say that. A tall glass of water. Yeah. When she was only 4'10". Right. <laughs> so tall to her. Tall to her. <laughs> I wanted to hear what Tyler had to say, because when I brought home my husband, she was in the acute stages of Alzheimer's, so she wasn't um, lucid enough to really understand. She didn't even recognize me as her own granddaughter. But when she met my husband, she lit up. I mean, she lit up like it was Christmas. <laughs> There's something about a book they're bringing up. Um, it involves publishing. They're having me talk about like publishing, releasing something. It keeps coming through. The thing is, is they're putting a hold on this. For some reason, they're bringing some family element into this in some way, and they're putting a delay on it, like a hold on it. So. It's not viewed as a bad thing, but they're just putting delay, delay, delay around this for a cent. That was strange. It fell on its own, too. Whew, that's odd. Uh, weird. What fell? There's, there's a series of handbags behind you. OK. And the third handbag fell behind you <laughs> off of the shelf on its own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I'm sweating. Yeah, uh, like what about you? That's <laughs> oh my God, that was pretty weird. Okay, give me one sec here. Basically, have you ever thought about writing about family, publishing a book? Well, I, I wrote a book, but it hasn't been published because there oh. were some issues with my family Got and their them. opinions of the book. Yes. She's giving her approval hmm. for you to put this out. She wants you to be able to share your truth with the world. I did feel as though my story would help a lot of people that have dealt with abandonment issues and things like that. Absolutely. And you can take something that gave you so much pain and help people. Please know that's a big message today. All right. OK. <laughs> I'm curious to see the yeah, photo. Sure. Can I turn it over? Sure. <laughs> Doris. Doris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you for being so open today. Well, thank you for helping me. I think you made a lot of things clear for me. I thought Tyler was very insightful, intuitive. Clearly, he's feeling genuine messages. I think you're meant to have that thing that fell. <laughs> That's so weird. Grandma's uh, sending a... Maybe sending she a left an inheritance in it first. <laughs> <laughs> but that's interesting. Half my life's struggle has been trying to have a relationship with my own mother. So when Tyler told me, stop, <laughs> you're only hurting yourself. 
clearly this woman doesn't want you in her life. I felt validated, like, you're right. It's over. Okay. My mother, she missed out on a good thing. So which one are you feeling? The best part of life is raising a child, loving a child, accepting a child, nurturing a child. I think he nailed where I am in my life right now. I'm only focusing on myself, my family, and my beautiful child that we're about to have.